All right, Dave, I got my next character ready, and it starts with a Yonti. Dude, you know how I feel about magic resistance. You are getting sleepy, and we'll allow Ted to play any character he wants. I will allow Ted to play any character he wants. And you will let him start with a magic item. Whoa, 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 now you've gone too far, Ted. You know how chintzy I am with magic items. Fine, Dave, let's just talk about the D&D character build for the Snake Charming Yonti Hypnotist. Welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Dave, and as usual, I'm joined by this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. Hey, no mind tricks here. If you want more D&D content in your YouTube feed, just hit that subscribe button. And if you want more Nerdarchy to charm their way into your YouTube feed, make sure you click on that notification bell. We're going to be doing one of our character builds, and as usual, you can go jump down into the description, and you can find our character build guide that you can go download for pay what you want over on the DMs Guild. You can pay nothing, you can pay a dollar, you can pay a million dollars, you pay what you want. Not only that, we're going to have a character sheet too. That character sheet is a D&D Beyond character sheet. It's only fair that we mention D&D Beyond is a sponsor of the channel. Matter of fact, they're sponsoring this particular video. We love D&D Beyond. It makes our gaming experience so much better, so much more fun, so much more convenient. Whether you're building your characters, your encounters, or your campaigns over there, D&D Beyond's got you covered. D&D Beyond is awesome. It's got loads of free features, whether you want the videos, the articles, or even access to the SRD materials that are over there. But that's not all. They've got the dice rolling app that's built right in there. You can click right on your character sheet and roll the dice for whatever your chosen action is. Super helpful, super convenient. But that's not all. For you DMs out there, the encounter tracker is such a great tool. I don't need to use a notebook to record my initiative or my monster hit points anymore. I can do it all right within D&D Beyond. So why don't you? All right. So we, you know, this kind of came up the other night when we were doing one of our live chats and like the joke came up about the snake charmer. And then we're like, well, what if our snake charmer, our hypnotist character was actually a Yanti? So they would be a snake, snake charmer. Doug was going in a little bit of a different direction, but I think me and Ted are both feeling the marketplace uh flute playing snake charmer with a basket uh because it's super cheesy and corny uh but also kind of thematic it's it's funny it's thematic but at the same time you know the powers that you're gonna get are gonna allow you to manipulate people as well as the animals just as easily you know with this kind of thing so you absolutely can play this uh you know, so typically we break down okay you know what are the race options what are the class options background options well Really, we only got one choice for race. That's going to be Yontai, you know? Yeah, I mean, we already picked that one. You know, class options. You've got bards, you've got warlocks, you've got wizards, sorcerers. Any spellcaster can do any kind of spell that is going to be enchantment or, you know, simulate the hypnotist abilities. Obviously, though, for this particular build, we're actually more concerned with features, class features, than we are spells. So when we talk about later what we choose, we'll we'll get into that. So for your, you know, background, obviously, you know, the entertainer is going to work if you're going to, you know, sit there and look like you're going to perform. But at the same time, if you're actually looking to, you know, do a, a snake charm on somebody else, you know, perhaps, you know, you were, you know, an actual merchant or so guild artisan in the merchant category might work well for this character. As yeah, well. I mean, we kind of like the guy, the, the idea of the guy in the marketplace hanging out at his stall. You know, draw, maybe he's drawing people in with a snake charming and why, why they think that he's hypnotizing the snake to not bite them. It turns out he's actually hypnotizing them to spend more money. Indeed. So let's jump into the stats for this character. This character is going to be very hev heavily, heavily invested in the mental stats. So for strength, we have eight, dex 13, and con 12. So we're going to have 15 intelligence, 10 wisdom, and 14 charisma. And since, you know, we're playing a Yonti, we know that they're going to get a plus one to intelligence, plus two to charisma, bumping both of those up to a 16. So I guess you can tell where we're looking to go uh, class-wise. Uh, you know, as we mentioned earlier, we already know our race is going to be a Yonti uh, because, you know, it's punny, to say the least. And our background, we actually decided to go with Guild Merchant. And from that, we're going to get insight persuasion and we're going to get a couple choices we're going to take calligraphy supplies as well as the ability to speak elvish 
So for our first level, we're actually going to take Warlock. Uh, you know, perhaps this uh, this particular guild merchant saw too many, you know, bad customers. Maybe things were stolen from them. Or maybe they just felt that they wanted more power. And, you know, they reached out to an Archfey and said, give me more. So this is a very charisma heavy character. Uh, so we decided we've already got persuasion. We're going to take deception and, and intimidation for our class skills. And then we're going to look to focus on spells that fall in that charming category. So charm person, friends are going to jump right off the page for that, for this particular character. Then, you know, next up, there's also Fae Presence. That's the whole reason why we want to take this uh, take this first level in Warlock to begin with mechanically. Uh, a 10-foot cube, you can just charm, charm everybody in it. Uh, they're going to make a saving throw versus your spell DC, and you can do this uh, per, per rest. So right off the bat, we're going to get the ability to beguile and charm people. So we've got this Warlock who, you know, reached out for more power, and after getting so... Uh, maybe they had some second, you know, thoughts about whether or not they wanted to steal power or gain power uh, through this bargain. So they began to look elsewhere for where they might want to go, and that led them to study. They know their intelligence, so they're, you know, they began to look at wizard and and began, you know, research into the spell book. Yeah, you know, maybe a little bit of buyer's remorse. So we're going to take our next two levels, and we're going to take them in wizard, so that we can get our wizard tradition. Uh, which we're going to take Enchanter for. The reason that at second level we're taking Wizard and Enchanter is we want that hypnotic gaze ability. This is literally is like snake charming, but on people. So as long as someone is within five feet of you, all you have to do is gaze into their eyes, talk to them. They have to make a saving throw. And if they fail, they can't do anything but basically stare at you. And you can use your action every round to just hold them there. And, and you know, the only limitation on this is you can't use it on the same person until you complete a long rest if they've passed a saving throw against this effect. So you get to use it pretty often and thematically, I can't think of a better ability for our snake charmer that is charming people as if they were snakes. So this could be really useful to you know do a lot of fun things with this thematic build, but it, it's adding more options into you know this you know charming people route. Uh, and this character is, you know, still exploring, still trying to find, you know, all of the tools to allow them to be, you know, the best hypnotist that's out there. Uh, so they've dabbled in Warlock, they've dabbled in Wizard, but we're not done yet. They're going to explore the, the grandiose of being a bard. So we're going to take four levels of bard, you know, to get to the College of Glamour. This is going to give us enthralling performance. This is going to give us the skill performance that we're going to choose because, let's face it, how could you do an enthralling performance if you don't know how to properly perform, right? So we're going to take spells that are going to fall into, you know, that realm. So we're looking at enthrall. We're looking at suggestion. And we're going to increase our charisma by two, giving us an 18 at our fourth level bard. Yeah, uh, Ted left out a couple of really important things. First of all, when we take Bard as a multi-class, we are going to gain the tool or uh, instrument proficiency with flute. We absolutely must have flute. How else are we going to charm our cobra in a basket without that? I mean, we had to wait a little while to get it. We're also going to get access to expertise, which is we're going to take in performance so that we can be even better performers, as well as insight so we can better read those who we're trying to kind of con. Uh, then from there, we're going to bounce back away from Bard because actually we're not going to take any more Bard. Four levels is all we've really needed. We're going to go to Wizard and we're going to stick with, with Wizard for one, two, three levels, four levels, I believe. And what are we going to get from there? So four more levels is going to give us a variety of things. Besides all of the spells, we're going to get a stat bump, which we're going to put into Charisma, maxing that out to 20. But it's also going to take us to our sixth level of Wizard. With sixth level, you know, we're going to have access to third level spells now. So we want Enemies Abound and Hypnotic Pattern. And then we're going to want that Instinctive Charm ability. All right, so Instinctive Charm is, is really potent. Uh, if you're get, getting attacked by someone within 30 feet of you, you can do the Instinctive Charm. Uh, and this can cause the the attacker to have to choose a different target. Uh, they they attack the closest thing to them. If it happens to be like you know several within the same range, they're going to choose which one to attack. But the important thing is this gets them gets the attack off of you, and very fitting for this uh, character with a charming personality. Yeah, it's just another way to 
hypnotize your enemies and make them do something that you want. It's fun. It's thematic. Uh, from Wizard, it's going to be real easy. We're going to go back to our Warlock class. We haven't been there for a while. It's like the patron is like, hey, where you been? I haven't seen you in a while. You know, you took one level and, you know, you've been gone. But for, you know, 10 levels, it appears, you know, come on back. And we do. We hash things out with our patron and we're going to get more cool abilities. We're going to start racking up our invocations. Uh, we're going to get more stat bonuses. You know, we're going to end up with getting two more stat bonuses. Both are going to go to intelligence so that we can max out our intelligence as, alongside our charisma. So we're super smart, super charismatic. Uh, we are going to go for that capstone ability, which is beguiling defense. It's our capstone for this build anyway. And, you know, that is basically, we thought this was super fun that our charming character cannot actually be charmed. They're immune to it. But not only that, if you charm them, no, you don't charm me. I charm you. They literally get to judo flip anyone who tries to charm them. That is super cool and thematic. So a lot of fun things that this character can be able to do. Uh, you know, everything related to, you know, this, you know, you know, charm person, suggestion, hypnotic pattern, everything that we could pull, we thought, you know, was going to be, you know, really fitting for this. But, you know, when we get to the end of, you know, how to build this character, now we get to talk about, you know, how would you use this kind of character in a game as the Dungeon Master? Oh, I would love this, this character to be a random encounter or not so random encounter in the bazaar, in the marketplace. You know, maybe they sell oddities that you can't get anywhere else. So the the players and their characters must interact with this really unique, maybe slightly creepy character who is constantly trying to con them. They have to be wary or they might get hypnotized. Uh, I mean, I'm drawing a little bit of inspiration from Ka from the Jungle Book, who you know is constantly mm -hmm. trying to put Mowgli to sleep in order to eat him uh you know so you so there is a little bit of danger to dealing with this npc so i see this as a, as someone that you know uh, you know right along the lines of what you're saying but is is not you know just one place this is a reoccurring character they happen to travel the world and they're you know they, they sell and buy oddities and maybe information, maybe something else, you know. So it could be that, you know, this character is somehow linked to the ongoings of whatever the campaign is, you know, and the players, you know, keep being forced into, oh, well, you got to go talk to this person. And every time he's in a different town, he's under a different name, perhaps under a different guise, because, you know, this kind of character is going to have access to a lot of spells. So disguise self or, you know, invocation mask of many faces uh, is one of the things that we took, you know. This, you know, comes up and maybe through some of the interactions, like, wait a second, are you this person? Are you that person? And like, ah, you figured me out, you know, you know, so you could have a lot of fun with, you know, having this re revelation every time they encounter and uncover that's really the same guy from the first town that they were in, you know, could be a lot of fun. I mean, one of the things that we maybe forgot to mention is along, you know, the lines of that warlock, you know, classes that we're taking, you know, we take pack of the chains, we get a familiar, the familiar is a poisonous snake. So at this point, our King Cobra that's in the basket, we literally don't even have to charm it. It will just do what we ask it to do or tell it to do. And we, we, we speak spar parcel tongue, tongue because we are a Yanti essentially. And, uh, you know, it's, it's no big deal. We just ask them, but you know, that snake can also be part of the NPC and be something that kind of creeps the players out and, you know, is doing stuff and has adds to the antics. I really like this. While it could be a villain, it could be someone you use to fight your players. I would have more, way more fun with this as an NPC that intera interacts with the players that maybe isn't always on their side or have their bench best interest at heart, but they're useful enough and they appear in, often enough for the players to actually interact with them and not just straight out try to murder them, hopefully. You know, if you were going to use this kind of character uh, as more of a villainous option, uh, you know, there was, there's going to be a lot of layers in the defense. This is the character that's going to have plans. It's going to, you know, be able to have, you know, proxies in place, you know, dupes, you know, so the things are pointing to somebody else other than them. And they're going to get away because 
super intelligent, super charismatic. They're going to have, you know, pitfalls and ways to like, oh, nope, you're not getting me this time. Uh, so when you get into those kind of, you know, schemes and characters, you know, you're going to have to fight this guy a number of times. And with things like charm person, suggestion, command, fear, dominate person, you're going to wind up fighting your fellow allies, you know, more than you're going to be fighting him. So he's going to sit back and watch the fun, you know, numerous times uh, and, you know, possibly doing so from the shadows. So, yeah. I also see this character as possibly being the, the number two to the big, big, bad, evil guy, right? Their advisor would work as well for me. I, I would 100% agree with that as well. Uh, you know, that, that falls into the very Jafar-esque kind of, uh, you know, thing from Aladdin. You know, I mean, he even had the snake staff that he used to, to hypnotize. And, you know, while in that it was the magic item that did it, you know, it would actually be the magic of the character. So, you know, totally fits. So the character book... So the character build puns don't stop here. Why don't you check out the clairvoyant over here? DM's Guild isn't the only place where we're creating content. Over on Patreon, we create 5e content for players and DMs alike every month. But that's not all we do. We have patron-only live chats every week, monthly giveaways that our patrons are automatically entered in, and more. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.